Hello class, in this video I'm going to do exercise 8.28 for you. Uh, you have to do a bunch of these other formal proofs for your homework, so I don't want to do those, but this is one of the ones that you aren't assigned or that I didn't do in lecture. Uh, notice that our premise here is a biconditional, so what this exercise is supposed to be teaching us is how to reason from a biconditional, but it's kind of funny because what we have to do with it is prove a contradiction, so this is a sort of a funny exercise, and it's a little bit different than these ones that you have to do because um, those aren't proofs of contradictions, but rather proofs of other arrow-type claims. Let's pull up the Fitch file to see how we would do such a thing, from P, biconditional, not P, to prove a contradiction. One thing we could do, if you think about it, is we know that P or not P is a tautology, so the excluded middle tautology. If we had such a thing, then we could easily prove this. Because first we do a subproof for P, and then we do biconditional elim to get not P, and that's a contradiction. Then we consider the other case. What about not P? Well, then we could do biconditional elim to get P, and then a contradiction. So if we could prove P or not P, then this would be pre pretty easy. You're not allowed to use totcon, however, in order to introduce P or not P. So if you wanted to go that route, you would actually have to do that proof. Of course, that should be obvious and trivial for you. The reason why I don't allow you to do totcon is because you have to know how to do that proof uh, in order to do well in this class. There's actually a much easier way of doing it than even that, though. Uh, all we have to do is assume P in the first place. Uh, because, oops, I didn't need another subproof there. Uh, because after we have p here, then we can just write not p by biconditional elim immediately. So here I'm doing biconditional elim, citing these two things. Um, okay, so then that's a contradiction. So if I can find my contradiction symbol, that's contradiction intro. And I just did a reductio of p. So now outside of that subproof, what I can do is I can... Uh, right, not P, because I assumed P and got a contradiction, so that's my basis for introducing the negation symbol. So all of this ought to check out so far. Notice now I have not P here. I didn't need to put it in a subproof uh, to do proof by cases. Uh, now I can just get P immediately, because I can do biconditional elim uh, going the other direction now from this and my original premise. Now I have P, and of course now I have another contradiction symbol. And indeed, now we are done. So for all of those cases where you need something like P or not P, there's almost always a shortcut or a faster way to do it. But if the most intuitive way for you to do it is with the excluded middle, then don't be dissuaded. That's a perfectly reasonable strategy if that makes sense for you. Okay, thanks.